Hey everybody, so if all you wanted to see was the difference between an 8 inch bar and a 12 inch bar, this is it. We're going to get it right out of the way at the beginning so you don't have to get bored with the rest of this. So I have a previous video of the bars we're seeing here. These are 8 inch TC Brothers Mini Apes. I'm using the factory uh, cables and wiring from a Speedmaster. Um, I had to run them on the tank side of the fork tree, um, but they do work and they're fine but I wanted to go with something taller. So if you want to get a comparison between these 8 inch and the 12 inch, here you go. So this is after getting the 12 inch bars installed. I did use the Triumph high bar kit for the wiring and the brake lines to get them up there. The rest of this video is me fumbling around trying to get that installed. I am not a professional mechanic. This is really the first motorcycle I'm, I'm doing this kind of work on. So don't take this as professional advice. You can just follow along with me as I try to figure it out. Um, I did discover that the bars that I'm using right here, these 12 inch bars, are taller than the standard Triumph high bars. So I ran into some issues with the cables and the wires. Um, you can stick around the journey, you know, and, and kind of watch as I fumble, or you can skip right to the end uh, and, you know, kind of see where I'm talking here about the differences and why I chose these bars. All right, so if you want to stick around, great. If you want to fast forward, I don't blame you. I wouldn't really want to watch me fumble around either. But if you want to learn more about installing the high bar cable and wiring kit from Triumph, uh, you might learn a thing or two if you stick around. So this is the high bar kit for my 22 Speedmaster. Um, I called my local Triumph dealer to order this in, and it took him a couple of days. Um, let me zoom in there so we can see the actual part number for that. Um, I do want to note, though, that this part number is very specific to my 22 Speedmaster. Uh, if you go online and you do a little bit of research, you'll see that the Bonneville Bobber and the Speedmaster, and then depending on the VIN number, the generation, um, they, all these have different uh, part numbers in them. So you want to make sure that you cross-reference and, and order the right one. Actually, I had to kind of guide my dealer a little bit to make sure that we got the right kit in. So I just wanted to give you a, a quick idea of what's inside. So if we open this guy up, <clears throat> got some packaging in here. The first thing right on top, we have a little kit of some hardware. There's going to be some new cable clamps. Um, I'm not sure if that's instructions in there or not. I did find the instructions in PDF online, but there's the um, uh, like some of the some brackets that are gonna be needed. If we go down to the next level, this whole thing's kind of folded in on itself. Looks like we've got some cable extensions. It, so it appears that for the electrical, we're keeping the same cables. They're just adding some extensions um, to the inside, you know, the, the kind of the end that's hidden um, behind the covers and um, not on the bars themselves. So we got a couple of new uh, cables here. We have a new front brake line. Let's go ahead and move that over. And if we go down to the next level, looks like we have even more cables in here. We'll set that aside. And then um, looks like there's a brand new clutch cable that should be long enough to reach um, from the high bar all the way down to the bottom. And I believe, let me get that out of there. Yep, that looks like everything. So it's pretty straightforward stuff. You know, we got a new clutch cable, new brake cable, New electrical lines for, you know, obviously we have a uh, electric throttle, um, brake lines, uh, brake lights, and, and that sort of stuff. Um, so anyway, that's what comes in the kit itself. So here's my new TC Brothers 12-inch Mini Apes. They have this uh, sort of protective foam covering on them. There's the chrome underneath. We'll see that more later. But just for comparison's sake, you know, let's look over here at uh, old Speedy and... I'm gonna try to like hold this up by comparison. There we go. You can see that we're we're looking at a pretty good pretty good rise there between the eight and the twelve inch. So we'll see that more once that's on the bike. So the first step in the instructions is to remove the tank, which I've never done before, so this should be fun. Um, I already removed the seat. What we've got under here is um, a twelve millimeter bolt right here, and then there's another. 12 millimeter bolt right there. So we'll take those two out so that we can start removing the tank. So I decided to pause here for a minute. I'm, you know, learning how this tank comes off. So first off, the whole tank will actually slide 
backwards a bit once those two bolts are out in the back. You notice I've got a cloth here to kind of protect the paint on both the frame and the tank. And I have another cloth up there trying to do the same. I'm probably gonna end up scratching it a little bit. There are these two kind of rubber nubs that go up here on either side of the frame. I guess the, they've got some grooves in the tank that they fit into. Both of them fell out as I was taking the tank off. Um, so the tank is connected to the bike through this fuel line here. So there's a clip connecting that fuel line. And then also this plug right here is, um, I'm guessing from the fuel level sender. Just wanted to come back here real quick. It actually is both clips. I thought it was just one. And now I gotta get the fuel line disconnected. And the way this works is there's this clip here that simply slides back. Doesn't need to come all the way off. But when you slide that back, it exposes a little push, uh, I guess a tab on this side, and there's also one on the other, tab, uh, other side. So you can try to turn that a little bit. Uh, an extra set of hands is obviously gonna be a huge help here. If you can turn that a bit, bringing the tank you know, up and kind of turning it, you can squeeze both of those tabs and then pop it straight off. So you don't have to remove these clamps. You don't have to disconnect the line. You just press those tabs to remove it from, uh, from the fuel rail here. All right. Getting that off might be the most annoying part about this whole thing. Um, so as I said, there's like this clamp that slides back. There's these two little tabs you squeeze on either side to pop it off of that little nozzle back there. Um, having an extra set of hands here would be obviously a huge help. I had to prop up the back of my tank with a little block of wood to give me the, the clearance that I needed. Um, there is actually one more line that I did not see earlier. There is a a vent line, here it is. So there's a vent line that just simply, there's no clamp or anything on it, just sticks up to a, a nipple on the bottom of the tank on the left side. So that does need to come off as well. As soon as I pulled that off, I actually heard the tank depressurize a little bit. Um, so now the tank is ready to take off. Two plugs, one fuel line, one vent line. So here are the two rubber mounts that I was talking about. So these, when I was uh, messing around with the tank, they both fell off, but they both, you know, go onto these little tabs on the um, on the frame, and then the tank has these little sort of cups that it slips forward into. So you take those two bolts off the back, the whole tank slides backwards off that puck on either side, and then you disconnect the lines that I was talking about. So the next thing that the instructions say to do is to drain the master cylinder for the front brakes. So I've already removed the two screws here. This cap is loose, but I just, I'm kind of leaving it there for now because I'm filming. Um, so the brake line comes down and mine goes behind the, uh, the fork tree here. Um, normally it would be in front. I've already moved it behind for the first set of mini apes that I put on here. So anyway, it goes down to here and then comes up to this little uh, block and it screws into that block, which then goes into a separate line that goes back, I assume, to the, uh, the ABS system. So this line right here, the one that goes up to the grip, um, is actually the one that we're going to be replacing. That came in the kit, but we need to drain the fluid out of that so that we're not getting fluid all over the place. Um, brake fluid can strip paint off if you don't clean it up right away. So if you do drip any when you're doing this process, you want to make sure you're, you're very careful to clean that up. So in order to do that, um, we need to um, open up or crack the brake bleeder on the right side front caliper per the instructions. So there's a little rubber cap on here that I've already um, pop that off and it's all black so of course it's hard to see so 11 millimeter it is um, so what I'm going to do and I can't film it because I'm just one guy uh, is I'm going to hook a hose up to that and then crack it I'm going to run a hose I have a, a jar of old brake fluid because I'm always doing stuff um, like this so anyway I'm going to run that down into the jar I'm going to crack that open and then we're going to slowly slowly pump the front brakes to to bleed down the master cylinder enough that when I take things apart, there's a little bit less of a mess, okay? So that's that's the procedure. So I wanted to point out, you want to slowly squeeze the front brake while you do this. If you squeeze too hard, you can see how it's pushing pushing brake fluid up. If you squeeze fast, it's gonna you know go all over the place. So you just wanna slowly squeeze. And then down here, I've got this draining um, into this jar. You can kind of see it as I squeeze, it's draining a little bit out there. This type of thing is obviously for a little bit easier if you have a buddy to help you out. Looks like I'm almost getting there. So I'm gonna try to drain the rest of this out and then we'll, uh, we'll pick up again on the next step. 
So next is to disconnect the brake line where it comes in. Um, I stuffed the rag back here because there is still gonna be some residual fluid in there. Um, again, you wanna try to minimize this getting anywhere on your paint or anywhere on the bike because it is going to um, strip paint away or at least it can. Let's see here. Try to film while we're doing this. 10 feels all right. Once you have that nut loose, the whole thing just pulls straight out and you can start to um, pop it loose from these plastic clips. And again, just kind of working my way up to the top. I think that's pretty much it. There, we got it loose, no big deal. And then um, we can actually remove that hose from the, uh, the back of the caliper itself, or the, the master cylinder itself, excuse me. Now there are going to be a couple of um, washers. There's one on the, the head side of that nut or bolt. And then there's one on the side here, uh, kind of pinching the, the top of the brake hose where it goes into the master cylinder. The kit comes with new washers. Um, you really shouldn't reuse those. Now, I'm not gonna say I've never reused the washers when doing brake lines, but it's not a good habit to get into. So you don't have to worry about saving those. You do have to save the bolt, however, so don't get rid of that. And by the way, I just wanna mention that this does appear to be a 14 uh, millimeter to get that nut off when the time comes. So next step over on the left side of the bike, you have this cable clamp um, for all of your electrical coming up. Um, also the factory setup, the brake, uh, sorry, the clutch cable goes through that as well on its way in front of the, the fork tubes and the, the tree up here. So um, you have to remove this. Um, that way we have plenty of room so that you can pull your clutch cable out um, also, we're, since we're going to be doing uh, a lot of work with the electrical wiring here, we're going to be adding extensions because they, they attached all these plugs back here. So it is going to be a T25 and, um, you know, just going to go ahead and remove both of these guys so that we can get uh, everything else apart. So the next step is to remove the clutch cable. Um, so the clutch cable back off this big um, this big lock nut here so that I can get some, some play uh, because we are gonna be sort of taking apart all of this stuff here. The clutch cable goes down. Yours may run on the front side, but mine runs behind, down the frame, um, all the way down here under the engine casing. There is a small bracket with two bolts um, holding the clutch cable. And then the clutch cable runs into this little lever um, right here on the bottom of the engine. So this part, getting that reattached to me was quite a bear to get that in there. There's like a little groove. I don't know if I'm going to be able to show it well on camera, but there's a little groove that that thing sits into so that it can kind of go in and then lock into place. So when you pull it, it doesn't go anywhere. So that might be a bit fiddly to, uh, to get that apart. Um, but anyway, we need to go ahead and remove that whole cable next. So to, to generate enough play here. So again, I, I backed off the big locking nut. And then you want to turn in the whole the whole assembly. Um, what this is going to do is it's going to make the line, the cable back here, looser so that we can start to, to finagle it out. You'll see when you spin this thing around, let me see if I can turn it back again, there's a groove cut into both of these um, both of these bits. So once you get enough slack in here, you'll be able to pull it back and then the cable will actually come out through that groove when the whole thing comes apart. I'm really trying to show you how you can do this. So I've got whole assembly loosened up here enough um, that I've got some, some play, you know, back and forth of that cable. And then I've got the groove lined up on both of these. So basically what you want to do, and I have this thing up on a jack so the whole, the whole handlebar wants to move while I do this, but you want to pull this out and then pull that groove forward. So, all right, so I had to grab the other side with my, with my right hand. So uh, there, you can see how that whole thing comes out through that groove, and then right here, pulls down, and there's the barrel. So as I'm looking down this cable, there is a sort of a little bracket, so I can get that to pop free, coming out of there, which gives me some, some play. Um, there really isn't anything here except for this. So what I'm gonna do is just pull the whole thing straight down. Oh, looks like it did come out, look at that. So it does have a little, a little clasp. Um, I was going to try to pull the whole thing down through, but it looks like it just popped out of the frame with a little bit of effort. So I'm going to remove, remove those two bolts, and then we'll see if I can get a good picture of what this looks like um, at, the, at the, the lever end of the actual uh, clutch there. These are uh, eight millimeter, by the way. So I have my, my eight millimeter ratchet here. They're not very tight, just breaking them free real quick. 
There we go. So we'll go ahead and loosen those up, take the rest of that bracket off. So here you can kind of see, now that I've got that out, so this needs to go, you need to hold this bracket and you need to twist this cable to, to the inside of the bike. You need to turn that independently of this bracket here so that you can work, um, work that cable out. And then it basically drops out uh, once you can get that, get that part done. So I wanted to mention this real quick. Um, both sides of the controls, the brake and the throttle, have these brackets here. Um, it's a five millimeter, uh, two five millimeter, five millimeter, excuse me, hex head um, bolts here to connect that. However, you'll notice on their on your factory bars and also, um, you know, I've already done it on mine. You still may not be able to get this off. It doesn't want to slide off, and the reason for that is because this is pinned. There's a there's a little pin on the on the back side of this bracket here, and there's a corresponding hole in the bar to keep that from twisting. So I've drilled a hole in these bars. Um, the factory bars are gonna have that hole. Some people will actually grind that nub off so that they don't have to drill a new hole in the bar. Um, but anyway, so to get this off, you're actually gonna have to loosen back here. There's a, um, there's a little Torx screw back there. Again, I have no light uh, or no good light here, but there's a Torx screw here. And then there's another Torx screw under here to, to help disassemble the entire unit. And I just want to note that, you know, loosening it a little, loosening those two screws might be enough to be able to clear that pinhole. So you may not need to take the whole thing apart um, unless you, you really, you know, need to disassemble everything. But um, that should possibly be enough that you can clear that pinhole just by loosening those two screws that I just talked about. Um, however, there's not enough cabling to actually pull this thing free. You can see how the cables are stretched tight, at least on these bars. Factory bars, you might have enough room. Uh, the beach bars, but they're pretty wide, so maybe not. So at this point, we can loosen up or even remove the, the bracket here holding them on. So that way we can move the bars and that'll give us enough play to get this whole thing off. I had to put a rag on there because it was spilling brake fluid, <laughs> a little bit of remaining brake fluid in my master cylinder. Now, if you were actually installing the high bar kit from Triumph, you would also be removing these risers. Um, the high bar kit from Triumph, the risers have pins in them and then the handlebars have holes in them to locate the bar. I'm not using Triumph bars. I'm using um, an aftermarket bar, 12 inch high um, uh, mini apes from TC Brothers. So I'm not gonna be replacing my risers. I'm using the factory risers, but at this point you would be removing those uh, per the instructions. For me, at this stage, I need to loosen up the wiring. Um, we need to you know, pull some of this stuff through to give me extra wiring for my controls. And then these plugs back here are what my new harness extensions are gonna be plugging into. So there's this plastic cover that needs to come off. It's not a big deal. It's just these little tabs you can start kind of pulling on. Um, I might get a little uh, a pick to grab that top one, but you can see that they, you know, they've already kind of disconnected up here at the top. You know, they just snap back down again. So I'm gonna pop the rest of that cover off. Um, that's gonna free up a lot of this wiring. Um, and then we'll probably be disconnecting these plugs and finding which wires go where. So I've got that cover off and I started looking at, you know, started disconnecting these plugs. So the first two here on the back are actually part of the um, left side harness, I believe. Uh, and then these two here are for the right side harness. And this one here is for the throttle, the twist throttle sensor. Um, so all of those need to be unplugged. I already have these. This is actually for the daytime running light, uh, according to the instructions, which in the, in, you know, in the US, um, we have to have our headlights on all the time. But um, so anyway, we don't have the daytime running light, so it looks like they have a little blank out plug with a, with a loop in there. So we're not touching that one, but we're disconnecting these two, this little guy back here, this black one, and then this gray one. Um, so once we have those disconnected, I'm gonna start pulling all those harnesses forward to make room for my new extensions, which I have laying on the floor down here. Um, so go ahead and start getting the rest of those disconnected and we'll start getting those pulled through. I just found, and uh, I wanted to make a quick note about this. So the replacement harness does have all three plugs um, because I guess this harness isn't necessarily for US spec. So, um, you know, we do have that extra plug to go, <laughs> kind of lining it up there in the middle um, for the DRLs. 
I guess I just don't use that one. I guess that wire is just going to hang out back here, but um, looks like if I ever wanted to add it or I mean, maybe utilize it for something else, I'm not really sure. Um, I'll have it in there. So that's kind of a curious little thing. Uh, just something to keep in mind that the new harness actually has three plugs instead of the old harness, which um, let me switch hands here is only going to have two, at least again on my US spec uh, bike. So I've got my harnesses in and I did end up plugging in the uh, the DRL harness here with the, the new um, kind of ending plug at the end of the harness rather than than leaving it here because I did have this end of the main replacement harness. I didn't know really what to do with it. So I just stuck it in there, stuck the new closure plug here. I mean, maybe I can tap into that at some point for something. I'm not really sure, but really I'm seeing one problem and I'm not quite sure what to do to resolve it right now. So the, the wiring harness has come through here and there's these like little plastic grooves, you know, for them to fit into that you can kind of you know jam them down in there. But all of these things are like the perfect length that all of the plugs are right here, like right in this one fat cluster. And, um, you know, I, I, that, first of all, that caught my attention that that looked bad. The, the plastic cover that's supposed to go over this doesn't fit on that end with all of those plugs. Um, there's no place really for them to go. There's no... I mean, there's, if I move them out of the way, you can see there's like a frame bar right there. So they, you can't like, so I'm going to look at this a little bit. I'm, I'm trying to see if there's a way that I can take these plugs and sort of tuck them back. You know, there's like a, you can, you can sort of see, you know, where my finger is behind the frame or, you know, under this main uh, top tube here for the frame, there is an, a, an air gap there. I don't know if I can sort of tuck those because like I said there is a a bar part of the frame right there all right I think I've got something here so essentially I ended up taking both right side cables so that would be for the you know the starter switch and the four ways and and all that good stuff that's this cable here and this cable which is for the throttle and rather than running them down into that same channel with all of the other wiring where, you know, with the plugs, it just, I don't see how the heck that's supposed to fit. I was able to turn and run those behind. So they're sort of going above the harness and into this gap um, between the frame and the top of the motor. So underneath there, you can sort of see one of them isn't plugged in yet. So I got that gray plug right there, but there's a pretty decent size space under there. Um, so that's, that's where I ended up running both of those plugs. As soon as I ran both sets of wires back there, I had plenty of space with all the remaining clips or all the remaining plugs, excuse me. I'm able to fit the cover on. So that's that's what I'm going to roll with uh, for now. I have no idea what actual Triumph techs do. Um, you know, maybe they do something similar. Maybe they know another trick that I don't know. Um, but one thing I am finding with this this set of cables is I don't know what size bars. So I, I do, I kind of skipped ahead here because I did want to test fit the bars to make sure that it had enough wiring to, to do this, to tuck behind. And this, this wiring set just seems off. Like for example, the left side wires, I've got like, look at that. I got all this extra, yeah, you know, I don't know where in the world I'm supposed to tuck that away. I mean, look at this, it's, it's crazy. There's like an insane amount of, of material there. So I'm going to have to create some sort of loop, you know, with, with this stuff to tuck it away to make it look nice. On the other hand, the brake line is just a little bit too short um, for this. Like I said, I sort of, I skipped ahead. I'll, I'll talk about that stuff here in a bit because I wanted to make sure that I had enough slack to do those two um, right side cables. So I threw the bars on real quick just to make sure. Um, so yeah, it's just like the, the cables seem like this thing, I don't know why the extension for the left side cable is so long to begin with. It doesn't really, it's almost not needed. You know, I, I could, it could have been half as long to, to fit. And these are 12 inch bars. So anyway, um, so that's what I ended up doing. Ran those plugs behind. Again, I'm curious to see what other people have done or what actual Triumph techs run into. Um, but that's, that's what's going to work for me. So I'm just going to make sure when everything is buttoned up that it's not touching anything, um, that those wires aren't, you know, leaning on something hot. 
uh, and you know we're just kind of run with it and uh, and see how that goes. So the next thing is to replace this cable guide. So there are two. Uh, let's see what size this 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 is a five millimeter Allen key. Um, so those two guys right there are going to come out. There's a new uh, a new guide that comes with the kit. So we're going to go ahead and get this removed next. There's a comparison between the old and the new. Um, clutch side cable bracket. Now, as far as the orientation of this thing, it appears that the orientation goes like this under there. So the short loop uh, facing the rider and then the long loop sort of facing the headlight. I guess the, the cable's gonna, you know, loop out and around for the clutch. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get that installed next. So here's a comparison of the old clutch cable from the Speedmaster, it's the one on the bottom and the new clutch cable, which is the one on the top. Um, not as much of a difference as I expected them to be. It's maybe, I don't know, six or eight inches longer, something like that, roughly. Um, so before I go ahead and put this on, I do have to change this bracket over. So there's this bracket that was held on by two, uh, I believe it was, um, I wanna say it was eight millimeter. Uh, so really the only thing that's holding this on, little C-clip, so I'm gonna have to pop that C-clip out, and then I should be able to slide the whole bracket off, slide the bracket back on to the new one, and then put the C-clip back on before I install this. So this is why I'm not a professional YouTuber. And those who put that kind of effort into their videos, my hat, is off to you because the minute I run into some sort of issue, I just stop and I just want to get the, the problem solved and get the job done. So as you can see here, um, I've got everything back together. So let me explain what happened. So shortly after I got the clutch cable on the bike, I actually connected down on the motor and I started running it you know, underneath the engine casing and around the front part of the frame here. Um, I realized that that looked really short. You know, this is supposed to be an extended cable for the Triumph high bars, but uh, I'm not using the Triumph high bars. I'm using a 12 inch mini eight from TC Brothers. So I realized that the clutch cable was a little bit short in the configuration that they were telling me to run it. And I went, uh oh. <laughs> so let's start looking at some of the other things. So I kind of paused the whole process where the instructions tell you to put on the cables and then run them up through the the spacers and the, the guides and everything, and then to kind of run them up to the bars. I, I decided to change up that workflow a little bit. I actually put the bars on, and I put my grips on, or sorry, I put the, the controls on for the throttle and for, you know, the, the actual clutch lever and all that stuff. Because then I discovered that the brake line that was provided with the high bar kit was not quite long enough um, as described. So that sort of sent me in a little bit of a panic mode because, you know, I just spent all this money on a high bar kit. I just spent all these money on this, on these bars and I've got my bike all torn apart. So I apologize. I sort of stopped, uh, recording all of the steps from there on out. So what I'm going to do is provide some pictures trying to explain what I ended up doing. Um, so first off the, the brake line, um, the brake line was what I focused on first because after I got to that side, I realized it was even worse than the clutch cable was. So um, essentially the brake line has uh, a beginning that is bent metal in a U shape and then the flexible line comes up to here. So what I ended up doing was very, very carefully bending out that metal U, kind of opening it up a little bit to provide more of a straight line. And I did not use the cable guide. Um, I just sort of have the line coming up directly to the master cylinder. So. Um, I have done a ton of back and forth, you know, turning the bars, making sure it's not rubbing on anything, making sure it's not binding on anything. I think it's going to be okay. Um, at some point, I may try to add some sort of guide, but um, I'm not too worried about it, if I'm being honest. The other thing about this brake line, and, and this is a, a knock on Triumph, is the connector at the top that goes into the master cylinder is actually clocked 90 degrees out from where it should be. So um, this, this line actually has a bit of a, a twist in it. It's like it's under tension all the time. 
And I got online and I looked up a lot of pictures of, of bobbers with the high bars and speed masters with the high bars because I wanted to see how they were doing it, how the cables were being run. And I see that same sort of waviness, like the brake line is under tension. So I don't know what the heck is going on with that. Like I said, that, that top fitting should be turned 90 degrees and then the whole thing wouldn't be under any tension whatsoever. So I'm not quite sure what's going on with that. So I got the brake line sorted, like I said, not running it through a guide at all. Um, I also got the clutch line sorted because the guide, there's like a little metal guide that the line goes through. Um, I basically took some pliers and I bent the crap out of it. So it, it, you know, originally went out really far towards the headlight. I bent that thing up and then bent it again at 90 degrees to bring the loop much closer to the, the fork tree here. So um, the cable doesn't go out as much as it used to. Um, also, I had to play with that wiring a lot to get it to basically make enough room for the cable to go by because it wants to go up at sort of an angle instead of turning straight and coming back again, a little bit different than the way it was factory. So speaking about the electrical cables, um, so the electrical cables, again, I ran those. I, I basically, all the stuff that you saw, I unplugged everything. I pulled all that wiring out and I re-ran uh, re it down the bars where I wanted it on the tree, which by the way, I've seen about 50% of the bikes I looked at, the, the electrical cables go in front and the other 50%, the cables go behind. So I don't know what's on, but we're going on with that. I think they leave it up to the installer. So I ran mine behind, but anyway, so I re re-ran the electrical cables and that way I was able to bring them over and, and just make sure that everything was fitting nice up in front of the, the fork or in front of that, you know, the stem um, without a lot of extra wiring. And that brings me to another topic. Uh, Triumph gives you a ridiculous amount of extra wiring. I mean, it is, it is literally for, for like the, the left side controls, it's probably six inches longer than it needs to be. So you have this, this huge bunch of extra wiring that you have to deal with, which is kind of a pain. Um, the, the right side is not so bad. The throttle cable and the, the brake, uh, you know, electrical stuff and the starter switch and all, all that good stuff, that was all not as bad. But what I ended up doing was instead of just keeping those, those um, clips right there at the end of the wiring harness, which I, I have in another picture, I believe, I had to basically feed kind of a U. I had to feed the wiring into a dead space um, at the front of my frame. Uh, right above the, the cylinders and right above the radiator. I had to stuff a bunch of wiring in there, kind of go in and then back out again to take up all this slack. Also these, I had to run sort of down. They almost poke out from underneath the tank. So they actually kind of loop down and back up again because I had so much extra cabling. So I used a couple of zip ties to kind of keep everything uh, in place. I didn't want it laying on anything hot. I didn't want it rubbing on anything. It, I tell you what, it took me hours of turn, turn, adjust, turn, turn, adjust, turn, turn, adjust, you know, to get everything to a point uh, where I was happy because these things rub. When you turn, I mean, this cable's moving, right? So those friction points over time could become wear points, which could damage your wiring and damage your cabling. So, you know, I'm, I'm really trying to be sensitive to that and really careful about that. So I did a lot of playing around with this and I, I'm finally happy to where I got it. But at that point, I had already had the bars on. I had already had the controls on. I had already run the wiring. And I just, I sort of, I sort of stopped filming there. So I apologize that this didn't really finish uh, things off. But, um, you know, you saw a lot of that taking things apart. And um, basically, it's the reverse to put things back together again. One thing I would recommend is get online and watch some videos about brake bleeding because once you've introduced that much air into the system, you are going to have to bleed the brakes quite a bit to get all the bubbles out. I still haven't done anything with the um, bleeding the ABS specifically. It feels pretty good right now. I may look into picking up a, a dealer tool um, or a Tune ECU to try to do the ABS brakes. Um, I probably should do that, uh, but I'm kind of undecided at this point. But let me show you, since I started off the video with kind of a, you know, me up on the bike, let's, let's get a view of what this looks like now. You know, so this is with the new, the new high bars. Um, my previous ones were, were eight inches. So, you know, about four inches down, these are a, a foot higher. 
So let me see if I can get my, my foot up here on the peg and try to balance. Um, I'm, I'm pretty happy. I feel like that feels really comfortable for me. Um, you know, the main reason I've got high bars, besides the fact that it looks really cool, uh, is because I'm, I'm short, I got little T-Rex arms, and I wanted the bars closer to me. That's why I chose these. I mean, you can even see I'm on my tippy toes on a Speedmaster. I'm a little guy. Um, the Triumph bars, the, their high bar kit is pinned vertical. So, so the bars are straight up and down. So for me, I would have been leaning forward with those, which is why I, I didn't want them. And I, you know, I suppose I could have ground the pins off or drilled new holes, but, you know, I just didn't want to deal with that. So I got these um, to replace my eight inch, uh, mini apes. And I mean, this, you know, I haven't really been out, haven't been out riding with it yet, but so far just sitting on it, this feels super, super comfortable for me. Um, I feel like, you know, again, I feel like I'm sitting straight up. Um, I don't feel like my arms are, are outstretched at all. They're kind of relaxed. You can see my elbows are down. Um, this feels super comfortable for me. So that was really what I was going for, getting the bars closer and getting it comfortable. Because for me, this is a, you know, a, a cruiser. I go on several hours at a time. If I was doing some ripping around town a little bit at a time, I'd probably want to go with more of a sportier stance. But this, this for me feels really good. So we'll see. We'll see how this works out. So I hope you found this a little bit uh, useful. At least you get to see somewhat about what comes with the kit and how to install it. Um, and then what some high bars might look like on your bike. So thanks for watching. Appreciate it.